All right, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I'm driving a 2012 Volkswagen Golf R. Up front is a 2.0 liter inline four. Down below is a six speed manual transmission. If you wanna read more of my thoughts, head on over to carmarshall.com slash overdrive. We'll be writing a complete article about the Golf R. But let's get back to that 2.0 liter turbocharged inline four. Well, right off the bat, I wanna say that this car isn't completely stock. It does have an APR tune, but we'll talk about that later on. But from the factory, it is turbocharged and it's a 2.0 liter, which you might be thinking a 2.0 liter that seems a little small, especially given the fact that the previous R's have been VR6s up at 3.2 liters. But with the help of that turbo, you really don't miss the extra displacement in terms of acceleration, in terms of torque. You really don't miss it. It's definitely, definitely a Volkswagen. It's definitely a Golf. That blow off valve is, oh, it sounds so good. The car sounds really good. It doesn't sound like a measly little 2.0 liter. It sounds like a 2.0 liter. Now, like I said, it's a six speed manual transmission. Nothing really crazy there, but what I am noticing is that this car is so easy to shift. The clutch is real, real light. Um, and so is the actual shifter. You don't have to muscle it nearly at all to actually get it into gear, which is super, super nice. The one thing I don't like about the pedal situation is that the clutch pedal is almost directly in front of me. It's the weirdest thing. It's like I really have to get my left foot over to shift. I'd get used to it, I'm sure, but it's just like it's way far out there. Another thing about the Golf R's drivetrain is that it is all-wheel drive. This car sends power to all four wheels, which is really the signature difference between the GTI and the Golf R. The GTI is turbocharged, but it's not all-wheel drive. This bad boy is, in fact, all-wheel drive. Speaking of transmissions, this is a manual transmission, and that was the only option for the Golf R in 2012. So the 2004 R32, which I reviewed, that only came in stick. Then the 2008 R32 only came in the automatic DSG. And so they got a lot of complaints about that. So Volkswagen went back to the manual only for 2012. So let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have two gauges, my tachometer and my speedometer. And then in the middle, I get a little computer that's telling me the outside temperature, mileage, travel time, time of day, that sort of thing. On the steering wheel, I have options for the radio, as well as I can switch through the screen here in the center. Also on the steering wheel, you actually get a little R emblem. What's really cool about that is that the R32, the 2004 that I reviewed, actually had the same emblem in the same place. It had that R emblem. So it's not only a little bit of heritage, but it also reminds you you're driving something nice. You're not driving a GTI. You're not driving a base level Golf. With I think they put like 1.4 liters in them now. To the right of me, I have air conditioning vents, a infotainment center, which really doesn't have too many features, but it's very functional, it's very clean looking, and I really appreciate that. It does have an aux import, which is nice. Down below that, you have your heating and cooling options, which I reviewed a 2006 GLI, and I believe the GTI was like this as well, but the actual dials for how hot or cold you want it, it's actually in numbers. So like right now I have it set to 70, but in the middle of that dial is your heated seat options. Because the Golf R is a lot more expensive, it's a lot more top of the line, you're gonna get a lot more features like that, like the heated seats. Down below all of that, you get your traction control off button, your garage door opener button, which is nice, you can program your garage door to the Golf R. And then there's an R button, which doesn't actually do anything, it just lights up. Then of course, your six speed shifter, cup holder, handbrake, and you get a tiny little armrest. The armrest is so far out of the way that I don't know, it's it's not that really usable. Like, 
dropping my elbow down right now, I can't even touch it. But inside the center console, you will find a iPod adaption from 2012. So it's not the lightning port. So unless you have a dongle, you cannot use it. Now, speaking of interior, the one thing I've always not really liked that much about Golfs is the rear seats because they've always been two doors. So you kind of, they were, if you need them, seats. Well, this Golf is a four door. This is the first four door that I've ever reviewed. All right, so now we are in the back of the Golf R, and as you can see, it is a four-door, and that opens up so much more room than a regular Golf. Uh, the two-door Golfs, they've always had what I call if-you-need-to back seats, which if you need to fit someone back there, you could, um, but it would not be that comfortable. Now this, this is how I was driving, didn't move it at all. There's actually really good leg room. I do get a little pull down center console here with two cup holders uh, which is super nice that's all done in leather get two lights back here which appear to be led i don't know if those are led from the factory if those are have since been changed out but really this genuinely makes the golf so much more usable that was always my thing is like golfs are fun to drive they handle well i love the turbo and all that stuff um, but they couldn't keep up with the focus or the speed three because the back seats were so crammed honestly um, but now with this this is totally a livable back seat i do have my own climate controls here and what appears to be a little ashtray i also have speakers in either door which i just noticed two speakers actually so this is definitely a nice place to be it's not what it used to be it's not like other golfs where you can barely cram a toddler in here I would, I would be okay with riding in this car for a long period of time. Now, what I don't like about the Golf R, and this is such a, such a small, small detail, small detail, is that up by that R button, there are two empty switches. And I don't understand that. I don't understand why top of the line cars, such as the R, have blank switches. What, what's the point of that? If I bought the top of the line, I should have all of the features. So like I said, this Golf has been very tastefully modified by APR. Now if you don't know what APR is, it's basically it's a tuning company that works side by side with Volkswagen. So yes, this has an APR uh, intake, it has a full APR exhaust system, but it's still warrantied under the Volkswagen warranty. So certain Volkswagen dealers, not all, will actually warranty APR's work. They have to tell you which shop to go to. They have to tell you all of this stuff. But once you agree with them, you get your modifications done, your car is still under warranty. And that is huge. As I grow old, older, maybe it's just because I want less stress in my life or, or whatever, but warranties get more and more appealing as I grow older. Another thing about this car, I mentioned it earlier, is that R. When you buy an R, you know that you're getting the top dog. You know that you're getting the best of the best. Unlike this road, it's very bumpy. And so there's just something very wholesome about knowing that. There's something nice knowing that you got the best, that there is no higher ceiling. Now, it is four door. The car is a four door, as we mentioned and reviewed earlier. But what's nice is that it doesn't feel like a four-door. I don't feel like the car is any longer. I don't really notice that it's a four-door. I mean, obviously looking forward, I'm not looking backwards and seeing that it's a four-door. But like what I mean by that is just like, if I somehow woke up in the driver's seat of this car and started driving, which would be terrifying, but let's say that happened. And someone said to me, all right, now guess if this is a two-door or four-door, and I'd say, I would honestly truly guess that it's a two door. It just feels that way. The wheelbase feels short. It doesn't feel any different than a GTI or anything like that, but you get that practicality. You get that huge size benefit of it being a four door. You can actually carry human beings. What a crazy idea. So honestly, if you're in the market for something you could daily, but it's performance oriented, if you do have a family or you're expecting to, or if you just have friends 
I wouldn't know. You can use those four doors, but also this is a very performance oriented, drivers oriented car. So personally, I've been reviewing a lot of Volkswagens recently. I'm a big fan. I really like the Golf R. I could definitely see myself owning one of these if I had the opportunity. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys learned something about the 2012 Golf R. If you want to read more of my thoughts, head on over to carmarshall.com slash overdrive, where I'll be writing a complete article about the Golf R. But again, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys. Cause I'm from my soul.